I've seen a number of YouTube videos recently where on, a, on an electronics related channel they show the construction of some device including mounting through hole parts like resistors and they do it like this put the part through the hole and then with the leads up in the air like that solder it and then snip off the leads now I think that's the wrong way to do it and I'm going to describe the way that I was taught which I believe is better for at least four or five reasons now I'm no authoritative expert on soldering but I believe this the way I'm going to show you is far superior and uh, I'll, I'll explain why that is now the way that the YouTube videos do it which I'll call the bad way is a bit problematic if you have to do a lot of parts um, okay now in this case they're, they're more or less stained but they could fall out and to be sure that they stay where they're supposed to go um, some people use a bit of blue tack on the back to hold it down to hold the components in place or they splay the leads out slightly so that the part can't fall out I'm being anal about getting the colours aligned doesn't really matter but the electrons might not like it so yes you could splay the leads a little bit like that keep the part in a bit better but it's still wrong in my opinion and I'll show you I'll just solder these snip them off and then show you the way I do it right, they're all soldered and all the leads and snip right so looking at it in more detail there's the component the leads been bent and it's poking through the printed circuit board it's up here and that's the copper trace that we want to solder it to so without cutting the lead the solder is applied and you can see that pretty much the only connection between the lead and the trace will be the solder there's very little opportunity for the lead to make contact with the copper then the lead is cut leaving a sharp edge with an open exposed wound <laughs> of the of the steel lead and that could oxidize rust and perhaps even some crap could get in there and affect the junction between the solder and the lead so not quite ideal and we've got an, a nasty sharp excrescence now the way I do it I'll just bend up a few because I'm gonna one of the advantages of the way that I'm going to show you is that you can do a whole lot at once without any blue tack you put the part through the hole because it's a through hole part I agree with the other method to that point but here's where it differs I then fold it over as hard as I can flat against the board preferably I should have done it like that in the direction of the copper so it follows the trace and obviously that part is not about to fall out and again and notice I'm not mucking around with blue tack I'm not messing around with the side cutters or the soldering iron switching between those three things the parts the cutters and the soldering iron I'm just just doing the parts so it's more efficient it's quicker I could do all of them but I'm just going to do what the next three 
You could keep doing this, not only for resistors, but for capacitors, all sorts of leaded parts, until it just got so busy that you can't even see where the holes are anymore. Then you would stop and move on to the next step and then return to putting on more parts after that. I'll do one more to fill out that row, eh? I don't normally use this thing, but the hole spacing is a bit wide on this PCB, so it's easier to make the bend at the right place if I use that thing. From, I think that's Ultronics, part number T1495. Okay, so having done that, I don't solder, I do it in the opposite way. I don't solder and snip, I snip and solder. And I snip as close as possible to the part. And because it's been bent hard against the hole, the leaders got a bit of a hook shape on it so it, it's not about to fall out. It's very rare that doing this that you that the part falls out. The only problem is that sometimes you can just get so busy with wires that you can't get the, the snippers into where they have to go. there they all are and they're not falling off and then I solder them so I was dealing only with parts then only with the snippers and now only with the soldering iron I'm not switching back and forth between each of them on every part or every couple of parts. I can do you know, 10, 20, 30 parts at a time. So it's a bit more production line, a bit more streamlined, a bit more efficient and quick. But there's more advantages than that. Now you do need good sharp snippers that can get right in to the point. I probably should show you an example of how to do it close up if I can get that camera to focus. I don't know how well I can focus this. We'll, we'll see. Come in from the side away from the bend. Very close to the part. And not sure how well that's focused. Apologies if it isn't. And again. Solder him. Now, let's try and see the difference between the two. These four were done by solder and snip. And the others were done by bend, snip and solder and you can see there's sharp edges on those and these are smooth not only that the with these with the bad way the ends of the leads which are typically made of steel are exposed now they're going to corrode and rust so that's not good with this method the ends are completely enclosed in solder. So what, that one there where I didn't put enough solder on it. So yes the the leads are enclosed this way, the ends of them, so that there's no oxidation problems. And it's also not sharp points sticking out which could scratch things or catch on wires. Obviously this is all about through hole parts with long leads like resistors. So, uh, dual inline packages for ICs for example I wouldn't advocate that you bend each leader over and snip them I'd just uh, 
you have to put up the sharpness you get from those I'm afraid. I just bend the corner diagonals to hold the chip inside the, without pulling out and then just sold it so there's going to be spiky bits from all those but for the through holes with long leads no need for spiky bits. The alternative way to do it is once again lead goes through the hole but instead of soldering first we we bend over the lead now there's a good chance to make the lead touch the copper and we can do multiple of these bef before moving on to the next step which is to snip it now that's shown a bit long there I'd actually snip it much closer to the hole so at an angle so that the like a 45 degree angle over there although you could leave more copper uh, more lead so that it has more chance to connect with the copper but yeah cut it at an angle rather than straight like shown there then solder it and you can see it's not as sharp there's more opportunity for the copper to contact with the lead and the cut end is completely enclosed in the copper in, in the solder rather so the advantages are it's quicker because you don't have to keep switching between part and snippers and soldering iron you can do it, do it in runs you don't have to mess around with um, blue tack or you, know, you wouldn't need blue tack perhaps if you've only got if you're just starting off and there's only those parts on the board but if you had other parts already mounted then you'd have a problem you might need blue tack but with this you don't need to there's no no danger of the parts falling out uh, the, you, don't, you don't have the exposed ends of the uh, leads which can oxidize you don't have sharp points from those also you get much better contact between the copper and the lead now admittedly it wouldn't be so much of a problem with double sided plated through holes but in the case of single side boards like this if the parts are just sticking through the hole there it's not really touching the copper at all the only contact will be made by the solder but with this method at least you've got a chance of having contact with the copper and if you don't cut it right at the edge then you've got more copper in close proximity to the lead so it's a, it's a less hit and miss connection and finally and I believe quite important you know how when you're cutting these things they can fly off with quite a bit of force because you're pumping a lot of energy in with the cutters and then snap it's suddenly released and the, the lead goes flying off well that's going to produce quite a shock wave which may damage the integrity of the solder joint so the, another advantage of this method is you don't snip after the soldering the soldering is done after the snipping so there's no danger of, of a shock wave damaging the solder joint now this, this just feels terrible you know just holding this they're coming off so there we go all nice and fixed and then comparing the two methods side by side you can see the obvious advantage of this one smoother lower profile enclosed cut end better contact between lead and copper compared to that um, so yeah this is the way I was taught and I have soldered literally thousands of parts this way and it has served me well I highly recommend it hope you enjoyed hope you uh, learned something uh, if you did if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe Catch you later.